Saab, a Swedish car manufacturer, has just rolled out a new electric car that has a range of 621 miles on a single charge. It's big because it's the best range among all electric cars at present. Saab has gone out of business for a while now, but it's now back with this incredible EV. In this video, we'll walk through what makes this car so unique and what it means for the future of electric cars. The company rebranded to National Electric Vehicle Sweden, also known as NEVS, right after Saab went bankrupt. This new car is the result of their hard work in an electric car that can run for over 600 miles on one charge. And fortunately, the car won't be available at least in the near future. It is as if someone is trying to hold it even though they should let it go. Nevs has been in business for the last 10 years and its electric sedan is a milestone of beauty. It's amazing and I think it will be a hit. It will definitely make people laugh and look, however, it won't be on the roads within the next few years. Unfortunately, it could have been the reason why one would not want to buy an electric car. Let's delve into the reason for the enormous interest shown in the Emily GT, an electric car which is the newest thing in the world of electric vehicles. It is the amazing fact that it can travel a distance without a pause for refilling. This car can cover a distance of more than 1000 kilometers or 621 miles after one charge, which is truly astonishing. First, how does it achieve this? Actually, this is all due to the biggest battery, a really giant 175 kilowatt hour one. Some may think the distance is too much, but if you can really go that far without a break, then I don't know who's complaining. However, if you feel that a big battery is too much for you, take a deep breath. <sighs> the Emily GD is also equipped with the availability of smaller battery sizes, which is 140 kilowatt hour and 105 kilowatt hour as well. And here's another cool feature. You can simply connect your car to a fixed hub through a special pad, which will charge your car fast and without wires. Therefore, it became possible to charge your car at home very easily. Now, let's delve into the unique features of the Emily GT, the ones I stick in the wheels. This element becomes a major differentiator for it from the numerous electric cars already in the market. But in contrast to the Emily GT, its belt drive is not applied. It does not use any hub motors, but instead it features one on each of the two sides. Such a setup delivers 484 horsepower. However, there are still people who have doubts about this technology and the possible wheel damage from road contact is the main issue. On the other hand, Saab, one could say the risk taker in the automotive industry, decided to take this technology to the next level. The chairman and the ex-Saab engineer Peter Dell implied that the choice of hub motors provided the Saab team with such a peak torque vectoring control which was unparalleled. So the question is, what is torque vectoring exactly? It is a system which allows the car to adjust torque individually for each wheel, traction control, and overall performance. By using the hub motors of Saab, the control was taken to a level that was unprecedented before. Dull also went as far as to say that the car didn't require a steering wheel, rather, it was all done through the motors. A very accurate process. Let's talk about what makes the Emily GT different from other electric cars. It's in-wheel motors. The car used to be equipped with a conventional belt drive, but it now has hub motors featuring 484 horsepower capacity on each wheel. For some, the doubt is obvious, especially for those that are concerned how the wheels will be able to withstand the constant contact with the road in the long run. Saab, as a company, was considered a leader in the automotive industry, which was why they decided to use hub motors. There exists the opinion of Peter Dahl, the former engine director and a former Saab engineer, that this choice gave an unparalleled level of freedom to the Saab team to control the distribution of torque. However, the question remains, what is it exactly? Torque vectoring is a system that enables each wheel to receive a different amount of twist, which increases traction, steering and performance in general. The hub motors were the way how Saab raised this control to a whole new level. Dahl would state that the car did not need the steering wheel to turn, but could do so with the motors themselves. That is how amazingly accurate these motors were. There was a turbo version of the MLA being worked on that would have made it a real powerhouse. The NH90 variant was going to produce a whopping 653 horsepower and 1623 pound-feet of torque, which is over 2000 newton meters of mind-blowing force. Additionally, if this wasn't impressive enough, it can jump from 0 to 62 miles per hour in only 3.2 seconds. And now let's talk about its looks. They're truly eye-catching. 
the designers have blended the classic lines of the Italian models with the Swedish 9 to 3 and 9 to 5 cars, and the final result is truly a design to behold. The production of these cars is done by unknown Italian designers and fine tuned by the previous Saab engineers, they really outdid themselves. It is not only beautiful on the outside, but also it has a simple, elegant, and unique internal design. The harsh reality is that the Ever Grande Group, the maker of this masterpiece, started having financial problems in 2020. The production of only 6 out of the 20 prototypes planned was stopped by Ever Grande before it had to put Saab on hold. This led to the unemployment of the 320 employees of the Swedish firm. But there is a tinge of hope as the core team of 20 employees who are not only aware of the hidden beauty, but also have the expertise to unearth it is still there. Maybe it is a good option to pass the company to someone else and bring the Emily project back to life. Such as Polestar and Nevs or Saab before had a lease of a part of the facility in Trollhättan, Sweden? What's coming next? I've no clue. The factory death is a classic case, but that is not the case anymore. The Trollhattan factory is being revived. The factory once owned by Saab and is now partly converted to a place for Polestar, an offspring of Volvo, to do its R&D and so create the electric cars of tomorrow. What shall we say about the best thing then? Polestar looks keen on filling up a part of the 320 employees that Evergrande just let go with its own staff members. It is ever so lovely to see businesses contributing to the community where they are located and offering jobs to people who have been hit hard by economic recessions. As far as Evergrande is concerned, it seems that Nana Salander, who was installed as the new CEO of Nevs lately, is pushing for a buyer for the Emily project. The business is now inviting people to contact them, and it is not clear yet if there is a chance of the car being manufactured on a large scale. The program manager Peter Dahl, who is a former Saab engineer, predicts that with the current progress, the Emily project will be ready for production in about 18 months. Of course, there are few details to be worked out. Dahl mentions that the prototypes are battery powered from the Saab 9 to 3, and the battery pack produces 52 kilowatt hours. The prototypes are fully functional, although some safety features are missing. Dahl is not in a remorseful state, despite the fact that he is not aware of the brand's future. He opened that Saab is popular and a Chinese corporation could use the brand to build its own brand. Dahl thinks that what makes the story good is not its happy ending, but the fact that the workers who lost their jobs in the past have a chance to get another job. It is wonderful to see businesses such as Nevs investing in R&D and forming new job positions for local communities as electric cars and green transport solutions are approaching us. I do not know, maybe Saab will come back to life in the not-so-distant future.